All the way up there, DJ. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we are again, Joy Church Podcast, episode who knows? <laughs> 14. Episode 14, says right. the director. Amen. Wow. Uh, maybe 15. Yeah. We got Richard Case with us today, all the way hey. from Modesto, California. Yes. Is that yeah. it? Yes. This is this is gonna be great. We got a California guy on the crew on the podcast. Yeah. This is definitely gonna be different. Amen. 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 How you doing, Richard? Excited. Um, I'm doing really well. Good. Um, spiritually, uh just you okay. know diving well, we're into just, we're just gonna do some little preliminary things. Man, I appreciate you, brother. Amen. Amen. I appreciate I, that. I appreciate your passion you. and excitement for the Lord. And uh, just uh, your desire to see souls saved, yeah, man. Just uh, I love hearing your intercession here that you you stepped into, and just uh, yeah, I don't want nobody to go to hell, man. That's, yeah, that's a good thing, amen. Amen. Um, I feel like that's something a lot of people talk about, but you actually exhibit is 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 having an active desire to not want people to go to hell, and it's yeah. really cool. I admire that about you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, Richard. You know so, what we're here for. This is uh this is about the tenure of your life, who you were, and what it was like. Just flash of who you were before Jesus. The big kaboom when you met Jesus. How did you meet Jesus? And and then where you're at now. And Amen. Yeah, so okay, so kind of three stages here. So let her rip, Tater Chip. But who was Ricky Case, Richard Case in Modesto, California, growing up? Well, Modesto came uh, um, after. Is that uh, later? Yeah. Later. Where were you actually from? I was I was born in San Jose. Oh. And okay. I grew up in Richmond. Okay. Um, I was adopted when I was three days old, um, and that came from a failed um, um, abortion uh, attempt because uh, um, Joanne Miller uh, had, uh, you know, I, I was a rape baby, really. It was my understanding that I was a rape baby in 64, and I come popping out March of 65. Okay. Hmm. And See, uh, most people, you know, you, you come to church on Sunday morning, you don't know that about Rich. I know. You know yeah. You didn't, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, we understand the foundation of how it all started, man. Yeah. Come and, on. You know, yeah. I I have, I walk funny. You know, I have some, you know, limbs. It's like my wrist, you know, uh, um, is right there, but I've never broke a bone in my body. Hmm. And even I, I even have a hole in the back of my head. Really? And it's like... um. You and know, you're still alive. And still alive. So, <laughs> you know, Maxine uh, adopted me when I was three days old. Okay. Which is uh, uncommon. I mean, you know, usually adoptions take yeah. months and, you know, a long time. But, you know, obviously in the 60s, boom, it was happening. You know, it was a single, ma- a single parent adoption. Maxine took me in, and it was me and Maxine and Fred and my brother, which was... Who's uh, um, Fred? Maxine's husband? Yes. Okay. And uh, they had a son named David. Okay. And he was 14 years older than I was. Okay. And so... So um, you're adopted, you're in a home with a, a, a Maxine, and, and a, that's her boyfriend. Mm, if she's not married, she's a single mom. Yeah, well, no, it says on my adoption that it was a single uh, uh, adoption. Thing. Okay, all but right. Her, but her and Fred was married. Okay, so you're mm-hmm. in a home. You got with, a fourteen with, year old uh, older brother. Yeah. What's how does this thing fold out, man? How does it roll out, man? Well, uh, uh, they brought me home, and uh, um, I started. I lived in Richmond. It was um, I uh, I grew up uh, really just uh, um, you know, uh, I, I, I just things came natural to me, you know, for like ex- what. For example, um, I never really had my Maxine or Fred go to a uh, baseball game with me, but you didn't teach me how to hold the bat when I got up to the plate. It just came natural. Okay. You know, things come natural. I started adventuring, like, uh, down the street when I was about six years old, you know, and they was doing construction, big old hole. Well, I jumped down in this hole, and they was putting in, (laughs) they was putting in, you know, sewer lines, you know, or, you know, big old cement. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. I remember walking down 
just walking down oh. that little tunnel, like 200 yards. And the, it, it, the, dude, the whole, the we whole... have something in common. <laughs> I used to do that as a little kid, man. <laughs> yeah. We go concrete. Yeah. yeah. It was like they... We used to float down them when it'd flood. It's a wonder. I mean, some, of the, crazy. Stuff we, some of the stuff we did when we was kids is <laughs> oh, like, yeah. man, you get sued today. You get your kids taken away. What do you mean you let your kid float through a tunnel under a highway while it's flooding? Don't you exactly. know if that was clogged yeah. up on the other end, they drowned? We didn't, we didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was exciting. It was adventurous that I walked yeah. down. I mean, I literally, I think it was, you know, 100 yards or so. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and the end of that the hole was getting a little bit loose. And they so get I, smaller. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they so, do. You know, I was, I was. So you were an adventurous. It sounds to me uh, like you were an adventurous. At a child. young age. At a young age. You Just, know, at a young age. And then, uh, um, uh you know, I was involved. Uh, uh, me, Maxine, and David was already involved with uh, uh, a couple a couple car accidents. Oh, I remember shoot. my mom wanting to turn in a bread store, and I I seen the car coming, okay. and I tried to, and I was sitting on in the middle of the you know. David was here. I was living there. This was before seatbelt laws, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just rolling around in there like a ping pong yeah. ball. <laughs> Bingo machine. And I, to I told my mom, I said, Mom, I said, don't turn yet. Don't turn. Because I seen it coming, you know. So you're talking about uh, Maxine. Yes. Right? Okay. Maxine. So it came natural for you to tell a woman how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, the car, you know, slammed into us, T-boned us. The car went up on the side, you know. And, oh, and so... The car was damaged, and we had to walk probably around 15 blocks home. David. How old were you at this point? I was probably about six. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know, and... All right, so an adventurous kid, th things come natural, six years old, car wreck. What's So, so uh, you, you mentioned something about, like, a domino effect of car wrecks, huh? Yes. Uh, the you, second, I mean, you, let, let's stop and just analyze this. You, you were a rape baby. You survived abortion. Sounds to me like you survived yes. abortion. You survived this. You survived tunneling. <laughs> Y'all both did somehow. Especially in California, California, man. No telling what you's down in there in California. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was a it, car wreck. You survived a car wreck at six. So, I mean, what's all this? And I, you know, I know your testimony. You, you spun off into drugs. How, how, what, what really do you think just kind of opened that door to that? Was it a certain person? Was it just a need that you? Well, uh, how did um, all that come about, man? And how old were you? Uh, let's see here. Well, you know, uh, me, David, and Maxine was uh, uh, my brother had uh, went to the to the army, uh -huh. and he signed up in the army in September seventy one and uh -huh. was killed in December. Uh, okay, oh, damn. you know, in the car accident, um, he would have been uh, twenty one so at midnight. the car you were in. Yes, it broke my mom's back in three places, killed David. The bread store accident? No, 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 another one. This okay, is, this oh, is shit. <laughs> okay, this okay. Is another one. This is the second, you know, and final car accident. Okay. That um, mm -hmm. literally uh, changed everything. Yeah. Um, we was driving from uh, Richmond to Wichita, Kansas, because that's where Maxine's family is from. Okay. Okay. And we was driving back there, uh, and I later found out that we was driving back there to have a family reunion. Okay. Because David was on his way to Vietnam. Oh. It was in 71. Okay. okay. December 71. But we never made it out of California. Because of the wreck. Because of the wreck. Yeah. The, uh, tire blew. My mom lost control of the car. And let's see. Maxine broke her back in three places. David was killed. He was the only one in the car with the seatbelt on. Me and my little dog, Sandy, was in the back because we had a, you seen him, uh, uh, Ford station wagons with the, with the wood. Oh, yeah. Pattern, put, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah. somebody. That's old age. That's, That's old, old age, school. man. Vacation movie and stuff. Yeah, remember? exactly. And so. So how old are you now? I was seven. So this is six, one accident, seven, another accident. Wow. Okay. Yes. Come on. Well, it, matter of fact, I, I was six and I turned seven in March. Okay. So and you and Sandy are in the back. Me and Lil Sandy, okay. little Sandy, mm -hmm. Chihuahua. And I, I think, uh, I believe that uh, it protected me because all the luggage, see, we had it like that. And then I had the bed in the middle, you know, and mm -hmm. I was asleep. Okay. And next thing I know, I wake up, the Bam. car's upside down, the horn's going off, everything, you know, and I'm like, Shh. my mom's screaming. I say my mom, Maxine. Mm -hmm. uh, Maxine's screaming. I 
crawled out because the car's upside down, and we're in the Mojave Desert from uh, going through from uh, Bakersfield going to I, you know, I to Kansas. Yeah. 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 And so it's in the Mojave Desert. You know, it's uh, 1030 at night. There ain't no street lights. The only yeah. thing I had on was the moon. That's the only thing I could see. Wow. You Seven know? years old. So, yeah, six. Did you see your brother dead? No. Here's the thing. Was um, my mom was screaming, talking about David somewhere. David, where's David? Where's David? Where's David? I said, I don't know. So I was able to, at six, uh, just it naturally kicked in, was I was able to pull my mom out of the car. Okay. And the blankets and the stuff that I was laying on, I got and laid on the ground. Okay. And so me, uh, in this whole time, my mom's screaming, where's David? Where's David? And so me, Maxine, and little Sandy just kind of just, I guess, just dozed off from the shock. Because the next thing you know, I don't know how long it went. I don't know if it was 10, 15, 20 minutes. I don't know, uh, 30 minutes, whatever. But next thing you know, Sandy's barking because the California Highway Patrol are fi- shining flashlights in our face wow you know mm-hmm. because the car the, the the highway had been shut down okay okay when that happened and my mom woke back up she immediately started screaming i have another son out there i have another son out there i have another son well the paramedics put me and my mom in one ambulance uh-huh. with my little dog and my mom's screaming the whole time Right. You know, and she's saying, uh, I have another son out there. I have another son. Well, me and my mom was in uh, an ambulance, and there was another paramedic came up, and he said, ma'am, we found your son, but he's going, he's going, we're taking, we're transporting him in another ambulance. At six years old, almost seven years old, when them doors closed, I knew David was dead. Wow. I really did. Wow. I it just, when them ambulance doors closed and my mom was screaming, I just knew. So, at wow. six years old, he, I knew David was there. Huge traumatic event. Oh, at yeah. At a young yeah. age. And so, uh, what spun out of that? I mean, did you make it to Kansas? Did you go no, back to no, California? No. What, what, well, where, here's the where, deal. Where'd you go from there? We stayed in the hospital. Uh-huh. Okay. We stayed in a, a 29 Palm Springs hospital. My mom went straight to surgery because she broke her okay. back three feet. And I stayed on a gurney. Now, I was a little guy, you know, six okay. years old. I was little, you know. And uh, that's growing up, too. I was the littlest of the of the of of my buddies. Okay. But I was the oldest. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? But me and Sandy stayed on this gurney, uh-huh. you know, at six years old. That gurney was like, you know, way down there. And they would tell you, they, a nurse would come and feed us. I stayed on Okay, the, so she had surgery. Yes. Okay. What happened after surgery? Where'd you go? I went. Where, where, how's yeah. life now through this traumatic event? Well, after that, uh, um, I went to. I'm trying to get you out of the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am getting out. <laughs> okay. After that, uh, um, uh, I was at the hospital for just a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And then some uh, Indian uh, um, uh, couple came and got me. And Do I you went, know who they were? No, I don't. And I went to an Indian reservation somewhere down in that area, okay? But that turned out to be, I was there about two weeks, and then the next thing you know, Maxine's at the door, and I I heard my mom. And as I come up on the door, I heard my mom telling the lady, I don't care what Fred sold you or how much you gave Fred. That's my boy, and he's coming with me. So Fred was too lazy to drive from San Francisco to... To check on you guys. Yeah. When one boy was dead, the wife was... Broken broke, back. Yeah. Another one, seven-year-old, traumatized. And he didn't even come get us. So that caused... Max- Did he sell you to the Indian people? I, I, yeah. And I think about Joseph, you know? He was in prison. He was sold. Come on. You know? It's like, man, you know? And I thought, man... You so know, did mom get you from the yeah she, Indian couple? yeah I said did y'all mom, go back to California I said mom 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 yeah we never left like California we were still in California okay but I heard mom 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 and she reached around that lady snatched and I had long hair up. and she snatched <laughs> <laughs> that's the first Joy Church podcast knocking that mic over man yeah and she <laughs> she snatched me up well 
Donna, her friend, came and got us. Okay. Drove us back to the Bay Area, and we wasn't in Richmond, but maybe a couple days. Okay, help me grow up a little bit. Yeah, then we went to Traumatized seven-year-old, back at California, lost your brother, mom broken back. Where's where's this thing going now? So we moved to we moved to Kansas. Um, me, okay. and, me and Maxine moved to Kansas because her two sisters lived in Kansas. Okay. And with a broken back, that's where we went. You know, we stayed in Clinton. Okay. We stayed in Kansas for about a year. So how'd you get on drugs? So how I got on drugs, when we moved back, when we moved back to California, okay, I'm still young. Okay. I looked, I started because I was the only, I was a mama's boy. Okay. It was just me and Maxine. Yeah. And I started looking for love in all the wrong ways with all the wrong people and just really, you know, I started smoking weed when I was 11, you know. Uh, it always next, starts with cigarettes and weed. Yeah. I didn't even start smoking cigarettes for about five years. I was, I just went right straight to pot. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so that life of mischief um, started at a young age. Mm-hmm. And so, next thing you know, uh, I'm doing things to, for peer acceptance, you know, I'm a pothead, um, and then I was introduced to meth, okay. you know, at a young age. What are you young age? What? Are you, oh, man, I think I- 12? Yeah, about 12. Okay, yeah. all right. Between 12 and 13 years old. Okay. I was in a bathroom. You had about a four-year jump on me, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was in a bathroom with, uh, um, bless his heart, I hope he's still alive, but, you know, Mike Reed, he was like, you know. Turned you on. Yeah. Okay. It was, like, it was like that, you know, and this. and So you got into, a, I've heard your story a little bit, bits and pieces. I've learned some stuff today. You got into a lot. Did you get in a life of crime? Did you do some time? Yeah. Was, what's, yes. What's, what's that all about? So after um, my my mischief uh, started uh, vandal, vandalizing, throwing rocks through windows, just, you know, running. Just with being them. a rebel. Yeah, being a rebel, run, running around the wrong crowd, okay. yeah. you know, and. I think this could all rat. this could have all stopped when uh, it was like Ricky, it's time to come in. Okay, Mom, I'll be there in a minute. Instead of dropping everything I was doing and obeying my mother, I right I went that wrong way. I mean, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. and so that sent me down a road of twenty twenty five years of. Crime, drugs, rock and roll, the whole nine yards. Um, and I started stealing, you know. Uh, Did you do some time in California? Yeah. Where'd you stay? San Quentin. I, uh, San Quentin, the famous San Quentin. Yeah, I, 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 went, to, uh, I went to jail for, uh, or I went to prison. I went to prison for robbery. Okay. And that was, uh, you know, uh, we was in a season where... Um, you know, uh, there was a time where you use a gun, go to prison. Well, we wasn't using a gun. We was just running in the store, grabbing the whole cash register. Smash and grab. That's, Smash that's and grab. famous today yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> that's something they're doing now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, in if, clans. If yeah. you think about it, that's why, and I'm not saying me, but that's why possibly every cash register is bolted down in America. <laughs> because Richard. <laughs> 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 it was just real, you know. We, I just had these Walk ideas. Walk in, grab cash register, run. Oh yeah, it was burglaries. I was, I was, so, how much time did you do in San Quentin? Man, I did almost all the eighties. I did from uh, oh god, eighty two. I went to a boys' home for a uh, uh, burglary. Then okay. when I got out. It just progressed. Eighty two to what? Ninety. So you know, eight, eight years. Eight years yeah. in and out of jail, penitentiary. Yeah, tw- Not yep. jail, but penitentiary. Oh, yeah, I went to jail for a minute, and then, you know, um, it was penitentiary, penitentiary, you know. San Quentin. And uh, uh, being in Richmond, right over the San Rafael Bridge is San Quentin. So we're going over the bridge, and we're looking at a prison that I was going to go to. Mm -hmm. And I had 11 years. I got 11 years for robbery. Okay. And uh, How many times you do on 11? I did seven. You did seven on 11? Yeah. Okay, you get out. What's, what's, Mm. are you reformed? No. <laughs> no, so no, the system no, doesn't no, work, no, right? No, the system doesn't work. <laughs> okay, no. all right. I, I did the I did the jailhouse religion, mm-hmm. the jail thing, and this and that. But threw the Bible in the trash can on the way out the door. Yes, yep. exactly. Okay, you know, um, I even had you know because one of my jobs uh, um, at San Quentin was I, I say I was on death row for five years, but that was my job when I went. I got hooked up with 
um, I was a, a, a cook mm-hmm. in the in the kitchen. So you serve the people on death row for their yeah, food? Yeah, because they, they eat different from general population. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, I've sat, I mean, I was, you know, like, five cells down from, you know, Charles Manson. It's just years, wow. years ago, you know, it's wow. You know, we got a bad company, bad company. I get up in the morning and it's just another day. I pack my belongings and I must be getting them. That was the lead singer to bad company paroling from San Quentin. Wow. And he was like four, four cells down from me. Yeah. San Quentin's pop, yeah. popular. And when prison. I, went, when I went as a young man, um, then things and this and that that I had, you know, I became a man. So what kind of life were you living when you got out of jail? Back to drugs, back to stealing? Yes. Or, okay. Um, well, I tried I tried to do right, but it was like. I'm going gonna, gonna to segue into, okay, we, we got this, mm. we got this 22,000 foot view of Richard's life. Adopted, traumatized by car wrecks, death, get into drugs get into alcohol get into crime you're going to jail where did jesus come into all this man? jesus came into um when i was living in modesto california i got out i got out in 89 and didn't go back and by that was by the grace of god even though i was doing drugs and just i was trying to work the 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 stealing had stopped okay you know because i was trying to be a law-abiding citizen but at the same time it was hard sticking a needle in your arm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I want I want to be a good guy, but yeah. you know what? I'm gonna shoot dope. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and so um that went on for uh I was on parole. You know, I got out, I did uh, seven or eight years, and then I got out and I was on parole for four. You know, so I had to watch my P's and Q's. Right. You know, or I was going back. There was a couple times I went back, but it was just very like for, you know, uh, 30 days and you know, a week, and I got out. And that was, I believe, that God was using Mike Apsher, my parole officer. He was Jesus. Hmm. He really, I mean, you know, he was just, it was the grace of God that he didn't send me back. Because I gave him, in four years, I gave him like 35 dirties, uh, UAs, and he never sent me back to jail. That was the grace of God. So how'd you meet Jesus? So... After, uh, how'd you get converted? Oh man. When'd you get born again? I was in Modesto and, uh, um, I was, I lived in Modesto for about five years and only slept about two weeks. Oh yeah. I've been there. So, um, I just, uh, it was two days after my mom died. My mom had broke her hip in the shower and okay. she had became bedridden. So I was in the, pro- I was taking care of her, but it was like, as long as mom had something to drink and read, I would run up and do my thing for a couple hours, then come back and check on mom. This and well, it got even worse where I didn't notice the book was no longer being read, you know, and, right. you know, um, bedridden. I would come home and I'd take my mom, I'd clean my mom up and this and that. But I was, I was totally selfish. Yeah. And so two days after my mom died, I had some encounters um, I had broke down in front of a ministry at about four in the morning with a flat tire, and I knocked on the back door of this ministry that I had no clue that was a ministry. Steve Warren, he opened the door and read me like a book because he had been dealing with dr- uh, stray dogs and cats for 25 years, yeah. you know? And so um, I didn't have a star to take off the lug nuts. I had a jack, but I didn't have a star. He gave me a star. And I was taking off the uh, lug nuts, and it started raining. He sat there on a crate with an umbrella and was telling me about Jesus. And this was October of 1993. Okay, so there's an encounter. You didn't get born again. No. I yeah, Because he threw a whole handful of tracks in the front seat of my car. Come because on. a couple of days later when I was at the car wash, I was like, man, what are all these tracks? On? All this, you know? <laughs> but you know what? The, the, the major thing about it, the great thing about it was I didn't throw them away. Mm. I I just got them all and put them in a rubber band and kept them, yeah. you know. But lo and behold, that was October of 1993. February of 1994 is when my mom died, Maxine. And I had an encounter. I was going to the bathroom. She had she had became totally bedridden. Bedridden, and her deterioration was major. Major. Okay. 
but I was so gone in my drug abuse and drug addiction that I didn't even see it, really. Well, that's, so, that's part of the drug abuse and the drug addiction is to numb yourself from re- reality of what's going on. You know it's going on, but let's stay high. That's how you cope with it. Oh, man, I then that's exactly That's exactly right. Yeah, I, I, I was a... There's a, there's always a reason. Well, there, there's always a reason why we're doing the dope, the coping yeah. of we're we're replacing it with something broken in our life or a reality that's going on that's broken. And so. I, I've I've learned yeah, and that's so true. Amen. And you know I've learned over the years is it's really drugs and alcohol and sex. Them are really not your problem. Them are just vehicles we use to cover up what's really going on. Yeah, you know, and so. Um, mom's bedridden and I got up one night and, uh, I was walking by the bedroom to use the bathroom. It was a little two bedroom, uh, uh duplex. Mm-hmm. And I heard, uh, um, I heard Ricky, uh, Jesus. I, well, I hadn't had no communication with my mom other than cleaning her up, making sure she had some eat and drink and like, you know. I mean, I, I can put probably 24 hours of real, true communication into about a four-year period. Wow. But when I walked by that room that night, I heard my name, and I heard Jesus. And, boy, I stopped and turned. I flipped on the light. I said, who was you talking to, Mama? Nobody, nobody. She's, you know, totally deteriorating. Mm-hmm. I mean, on the verge. Uh, I said, who are you talking to, Mama? You know, nobody, son, nobody, nobody. I said, Mama, yeah, you was. I heard my name. And she literally said, Ricky, I'm getting ready to go home with Jesus. Mm. And I was just praying and asking him to take care of you. I literally fell at the side of her bed and wept and snot, tears, everything for about 25 years of disrespect. Wow. I mean, the whole nine yards. Wow. I mean, I literally... emptying of... Yes. I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, yeah. And that, he... That didn't even... I mean, it's just like... I mean, she laid her hand on me, a little frail. I mean, Maxine was good to me. Yeah. I mean... She didn't have to take you in. No. I mean, my years. Are, okay, so let's. So here it is. Go ahead. Trying to get to Jesus, the yeah. kaboom. So that happened. Okay. Well, two days later, my mom, you know, I went in to check on her and she was gone. She was gone. Mm-hmm. So I walked into the bathroom and I got a warm, wet rag and went and closed her eyes. And then I called 911. I didn't even really call 911. I think I just. I called the police and said, hey, you know, my mother. I called my Aunt Donna Yeah. and said, Mama's gone. She came over. We called the, you know, the police. Somebody come get you. Yeah, come, you know. And so two days after that, um, I had tried to kill myself twice. Wow. One with a gun. You know, I cocked the gun that I had and stuck it in my head and pulled the trigger. It, the hammer went off, but then I looked over when the, the click, I looked over and there was a clip to the gun hmm. on the nightstand, hmm. but I'll never understand. Let me tell you, when I cocked that gun, it kicked in gear. Where's the bullet? I thought, man, you know, then I had a little bit of uh, dope left, about, I don't know, about $90 from heroin, and I did it all. shoot enough to go I out. did it all. I'm fall I, out, go to sleep, and I did it up. all right there. I had probably about, no. Next thing you know, Tina's throwing water in my face, and I'm sitting up. Well, you know, as much as I did, should have knocked down a 1,200-pound horse. Yeah. And I sat up. She said, what are you doing? You know? I thought, Phew, man, this is all within 24 hours. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was so hurt. Yeah. Well, the next 24 hours, um, I was sitting in that bedroom, and I heard early in the morning there was a shake. <laughs> And I thought it was somebody banging on the window to buy some dope. So I pushed back the curtain with nobody there. And the next thing I know, I thought, next thing I know, I literally heard, so who you going to call on now? 
Dang. Because all alone. All alone. No Tina, mama. Yeah, no, no Tina, brother. Yeah. Tina was Fred's asleep. out of the picture. Tina was asleep, and it was just me. And I had about 35 years of craziness. Prison, drug abuse, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. How old were you at this point? Oh, man, I was uh, 30. Okay. Well, that same year I was when I got yeah. right, when I heard that voice. And so I was Who are like, you going to call on now, Ricky? Oh, man, it was loud. So what happened? And, and it was like, I was like, Did man. you know it was God? At the first one, no. <laughs> there was a, he no. had to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, That's an I was tell this guy again. There was literally another one. And I thought, wow. And I sat there and went, Phew. And I reached over. There was a pack of Marlboros on the nightstand with two cigarettes left in it. And I reached over to get a cigarette. And in the process of doing that, the roar of that room and the bed shook. Who shook it? I mean, it was like, man, it seemed like the whole house shook. I knew that bed so was So what did you do? I mean, and the what was time, the response to get you to uh, God? Yeah, well, here it is. Uh, so the second one came. It said, I said the same uh, thundering voice. Who are you going to call on now? And I knew. That it was God Almighty. I had to. I just, nobody else. Right. Because I just heard my mom less than 48 hours ago saying. Say Ricky and Jesus. Yeah. Ricky and Jesus. I'm getting ready to go home and be with him. And I was just praying to Jesus to take care of you when I leave. And then I thought, wow. He answered Maxine's prayer, didn't he? Yes. So I grabbed the cigarettes. I grabbed the gun. There were $610 that I had. Okay. And I grabbed that. And I left that house in Modesto, California. And I guarantee you there are still people in California going, where'd know, Ricky go? Where'd Ricky go? Because I walked out of the house. I left Tina asleep. Where'd in the you bed. go? I'm telling you, I walked down to the bus stop. I walked down to the bus stop. And when I put the dollar in the thing and I seen the dollar, you know, in the, in the, to ask for a transfer, I said, can you tell me where Bangs Avenue is? It's where I broke down. Mm, Steve Fremont. Warren mm. Steve, hey, and, and the talk. gospel changing the tire and some tracks in the back seat my where, god where did come I, on it, it had to be God Steve Warren yeah it was like I asked the lady can you tell me where the, uh, uh, Bangs Avenue is and she goes yeah downtown you just transfer to bus 17 and it'll take you so I, gra- I grabbed my transfer I had a gun on me I had two cigarettes and $610 and I walked to the back of the bus and sat down well, I got downtown, I transferred bus, and started going. Well, in the process, because it's way out, it's way out of side of town, okay? So, people was getting off, you know, ding, 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 you know, through town, stuff like that, and we got going outside of town. Well, I'm in the process of throwing bullets out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, she, when, I, when that lady wasn't looking, there went a bullet. You know, because I, I didn't want to, I, I don't know, I just didn't want to throw the whole clip with bullets in it. So I don't have fingerprints on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and I. Okay, so. You get, so anyway, so anyway, I got to the uh, outside of town, okay, and so uh, um, I was throwing stuff out. I kept, I'm going to get clean. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, I, I got out there, and once I got outside of town, everything started seeing, and I hadn't been out there again. But I knew at night, I just remember. So there was this little old farmhouse way down here. And the bus turned and was going. And it was the only house on Get the road. Get us to the house, Richard. Yeah. What so happened? It was the only house on the road. So I, <laughs> ding, the bus pulled over. We're running over. out of time, brother. Yeah. Okay. The bus pulled over. Here it is. The bus pulled over. I got out and drove off. Well, this time I went to the front door and knocked on the front door. And a uh, nasty old redeemed biker answered the door and I said, is Steve Warren here? Where'd I, where'd I get that? And I heard, yeah, here in the kitchen. And I walked through because what is it? It was a ministry, set free yeah. ministries. There was yeah. probably about five people on the, uh, uh, on the, in the front room reading the word. And I went through, you know, Hey, how you doing? And as soon as I came into this little, uh, um, middle room, I, I just, uh, when I locked eyes with Steve Warren, I fell flat on my face and wept for about 35 minutes. Repentance. 
true repentance. Snot, wow. tears, everything. I didn't say a sinner's prayer. I just got right with God because when I sat up, Steve Warren, he said, uh, so you want to serve Jesus now? <laughs> <laughs> are, no, this is what he said. He said, so are you ready to serve Jesus now? Come on. And I said, yes, sir. And, well, we don't have a bed. I said, hey, I, I, I'm not going back over there to the west side. And so we went to Walmart. He bought me a pop-up tent with a sleeping bag and... I had put you in the backyard. No, right, yeah, right next to the house, and I ran an extension cord through the through the window to have a little a little lamp. All I had, and I gave him the six hundred and ten bucks, you know, to the ministry. He didn't ask me where I got it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So, and I sat in that little pop up tent for probably six months. But the first wow for the first, I read the I read the word. I had a sleeping bag, a pop up tent, a, a little lamp. nice, a little a lamp, and that was it in the in the Bible. In a gave, Bible, and he gave me a Bible. Mm. You know, I read that Bible probably in from Genesis to Revelation probably in about maybe a week. Now I didn't understand about ninety five percent of it, <laughs> but I was so determined, yeah, to get the word in me versus shooting dope, this and that. So, okay, so here. So we what are. happens in this ministry, man? I, well, I stayed there about a year. I want to get to where you're at now, how yeah. you met Don. And how you, well, you I, know, I stayed there for about a Steve year. Steve and I, all that. I, I stayed there for about a year, and then Steve and Diane was called to Costa Rica, and nobody wanted to take over the ministry. Okay. So I found uh, uh, some uh, spiritual parents, Frank and Betty, okay. in Mariposa by Yosemite. All right. They came, and Steve and, uh, Steve and Diane, they said, hey, out of all these people in this ministry— we believe that you're the only one that's going to make it. But take this opportunity and leave. Modesto, the whole nine yards. So I went, had the opportunity to go up to Yosemite for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And Frank and Betty was Christ for the Nation graduates. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this is the second time that I heard God speak to me. I was driving back from KFC. I was working KFC, and I'm driving down the road, and I heard literally, I want you to go get yourself educated. I thought, man. I mean, it was like he was sitting right there. Well, the next day, and this was March, this was March 31st. So the next, or yeah, the next day was April 1st. And they, and Frank and Betty come over to uh, where I was staying and said, God spoke to us yesterday and said, if you would go to Christ for the nations, we'll pay for your tuition. Wow. So two months later, after doing the paperwork, I got on a bus in Fresno, California with a pillow and two bags and rode a Greyhound bus to Dallas, Dallas Texas. Texas. And Dr. Rents picked me up. He said, you know, really? I, I, I've been in ministry 25 years. I never come and got a, because him and Frank Betty, uh, Frank and Betty was all Christ for the nation. Okay. Graduates. okay. All right. Bam. Real quick. Speeding it up. So went to school, you know, um, and I started in the summer. That's when I met you. Yep. You know. What um, year is it at this point? This is 98. 1998. I've been in Texas. So I, I I was one semester ahead, I think, right? No. No? No, we was in the same semester. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah because we I, start, met you, I, I met you. I started in the winter, fall fall semester. So, yeah, that we started together. But yep. we, uh, you, you was, uh, you was doing something to CF and I or something because I, I wasn't on campus but about a week. And I met you, and then you told me, hey, man, you need to meet this one guy with a cowboy hat. And that's when you took me down to Leon's. Soul ministry. Yeah. So, yeah, me and you, you know, 25, been 25, 26 years. So, anyway, um, you know, then I met Dawn. Um, and I had the privilege at of— CF and I. Yeah, at CF and I. She's going to CF and I. Um, had wonderful uh, 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 teachers from, ni- I think, personally, I think 98 to 01, uh, with the two-year program, and then we went and did pastoral together, and that was basically two years condensed into one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, we was on campus from 98 to 01, but I really truly believe, hey, you know, that it was the best years of CF&I. We had our Randy Jones, and we had them all. Henry Holland. The whole nine yards. Dr. You know? Maloney. You know, they're all gone. You know, Randy Jones still around, but, you know, Dr. Weiss. Dr. Weiss is 90 years old, and I still stay in contact Dr. with Dr. Maloney. Him. 
I started, we went and, uh, um, Dr. I was, Belcher. Yeah. Golly, I was, uh, a, a, a youth pastor with Dr. Weiss. That's back when they actually called the instructors apostles and prophets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good time. They don't call them that now. <laughs> yeah. We had a good time, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, fast forward. I, I met Don. Met Don. Um, we, uh, uh, went to Israel together. Mm-hmm. I had the, uh, opportunity of going to Israel with Dr. Weiss. I remember you telling the story about Israel. You didn't have the money yet when it was time to get you. So you packed your bag. You went out there and sat at the, right? Well, no, that was a, that was a, uh, that was a girl, uh, named Lindy. Okay. Um, McDonald's, McDonald's and California pizza paid my way. Okay. Come because on. Because I, Dr. Weiss gave us some strategies and gave some forms. Well, I went to McDonald's because I didn't realize that all corporations across America need a tax write-off at yep. the end of the year. So I just took them. I said, hey, you know, take this paper. You read it. I don't want the money. You send it to Christ for me. McDonald's gave me $2,500. <laughs> the Golden Arches, Ronald McDonald, yeah. the Hamburglar. Uh, and, 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 and McDonald's supporting hey, missions. Uh, yeah. Come and, on. Uh, uh, um, California Pizza gave me 1000 there now bless uh, Dawn's uh, uh, little heart. Uh, she had to work for hers, you know. Her, you know, yeah. she had different she had, strokes for yeah, different she folks. She had people man. donate this and that, but you know, hey, she she cut hair and this and that. We went to Israel, and it changed my life. We was over there for twenty days, twenty one days, twenty days. We had one day off, but we literally went to probably six um, different spots, six or seven different spots every day. So if we're there 20 days and we go six, that's 120 to 130 biblical sites. It, it yeah. changed my life, you know. I was there for 10 and it changed, 10, 10 days yeah. changed my life. I had yeah. the uh, most experience, my my best experience. So is that where the kind of spark started with Don? No, the... Oh, uh, yes. Because yeah. she was supposed to go, huh. she was supposed yeah, I got to baptized go. in the Jordan together. Yeah. She <laughs> she was supposed to, she wanted, her desire was to go to India, but her time is, because remember how we used to pray? Yeah. You know, there was times of sketch. Well, she couldn't get off to go to that prayer, so she decided to go to Israel, you know? Okay. And she come in, and I That's was, back when they made you pray. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I thought, man, I thought, whoo, man, where, look at that redhead over there. Hi, and that's where we started. So what year did y'all get married? 99. You got married in 99? July of 99. Okay. And we just celebrated 24. And then we had Brian, we had Kristen. Um, we'd done ministry. Uh, we graduated. Went and worked with Dr. Wise. Yes, went with Dr. AG Wise. AG Church over in what, Grand Prairie? Yes. Yep. Uh, then we went up to um, uh, Durant with uh, uh, Larry Ham for Pastor about five. Pastor Doug. Yeah, about five years. Yep. I started the Joshua House. Joshua House. Um, and it was just, uh, I had uh, been up there five years. I was there from five in the morning until about midnight. And toward the end, I mean, I love them, but, you know, I became a glorified babysitter. I mean, I, yeah. And I wasn't having it anymore. I, I remember y'all had, did y'all have it written on the wall? It says, if there ain't no, no. spiritual change, there, there, no, ain't, there, there ain't no. no change. Yeah, there's no spiritual change. There's no change at all. Mm. Because you can have 17 years of sobriety at AA, but still go to hell. Yep. yep. Because it's about the relationship In and Jesus being born, Christ being born again. And you know, Richard, I, let's, let's sweep this thing forward. To, yes, sir. To, you know, I, I've... One of the things, we went to Mardi Gras. I mean, we went to Mardi Gras twice, right? Yes. Yep. Guy Pay and all of those guys, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, I remember our graduating class was full of street preachers. Bill and Jacob Watson, Chris Coe, yes. me, you, Guy Pay, just bukus of street preachers just wanted to be on the streets preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That was kind of like the DNA of our group that graduated together. And here we are today, man. And you know, it just uh, you've always had a heart for souls, always had a, a desire to see people saved, always you know, on the job, letting people know about Jesus. You know, it's just like fire hose all the time, man. And you know, it's, that's one of the things I've, I've appreciated about you whether the pitfalls or not in your life from yes. there to now, what what counts is where we're at today. That's the reality is where we're at today. And, man, I just, as I told you in prayer this morning, I'm proud of you, man, uh, just making some strides. And, and, you know, I believe you're getting back in that vein of, you know, what God's called you to do, be and do. 
Yes. And uh, yeah, coming into the fullness of that identity of and and, and actually doing it. Yeah. Uh, doing it and doing it right, man. Yeah, so, I, I, I really thank God for 25 years. You got any questions? You got anything, Chris? I ain't got, I ain't got any questions. I just want to say it's 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 so evident what God's given you in form of like a testimony and who you are, what you came from, in in using that with your evangelistic gifts, right? Like it's not an accident that that God's brought you through all this, and it's just it's it's really cool to be able to see like. Because a lot of times you can hear it, but just to really see and to talk with you about what God has brought you through, yeah, it's been really cool. So yeah, don't don't, don't be ashamed of of your testimony. Like I know yeah. you did, and I you know I I, I think a lot of times people think you know God. if 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 you got an evangelistic gift, you got to be at a certain place at a certain time doing a certain thing. Man, this brother, you worked at Walmart. Everybody at Walmart knew Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, you know, they had heard the gospel through Richard Case, man. Yep. And that's the thing. You're, just, you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you share it in the marketplace. And I'll just say this. We can take all of our events, all of our mm -hmm. organized evangelism, and stop right now and go, where's it gotten us? Yeah. You know, We're whenever, still losing the culture war. When, if we would have taken the gospel into yep. the marketplace, into politics, into just infiltrated salt and light in every area of the culture, yep. America would not be where we're at I mean, today. And some things got to change. Yeah, think about Steve Warren. Whenever he came out, changed that tire. Yeah, that was that wasn't organized and, ministry. That wasn't. That was just him being a Christian, going talking to you about giving Christ. him a lug nut. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. As I as I knocked on the back door, mm -hmm. he was. It was about four in the morning, and he was in, in the kitchen reading the word. Yeah. Well, three months later, when I knocked on the front door, he was in the kitchen reading the word. <laughs> you know, and yeah. as my class, I'm doing my class. Uh, gentleman Brady. I'm going to start reading the word in the kitchen, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Brady just asked me, uh, or he said last week we was talking with my class, you know, that I'm having. He said, Richard, um, you don't know no strangers, do you? That's it. Mm, that's and true. And I never really thought of it that way. It was like, and he goes, let me tell you, that is a, a gift. gift. It really is. Yeah. It's like, I mean... <laughs> I look, I mean, God's, how you doing, buddy? What are you doing, young lady? And you always learn from young young men, young girls, to old women, mm -hmm. old men. I, what do I say? How are you doing, young man? Yep. I'm trying to call the young ones up and call the other ones down. You know, you encourage an 88-year-old man by saying, hey, how you doing, young man? Some of them, I, and most of them, some of them will say, hey, thank you. <laughs> but that's a gift yeah. that, I, that I'm really realizing that I truly have. Well, I, you know what? Wrapping this thing up, I just, uh, I, I'm glad. I thank God that we're, we're together. I've always known that we're yeah. supposed to be together in the kingdom of God, laboring together in the kingdom of God. I, I didn't know the timing of it, but, man, you've been here, you and John been here at Joy Church for two years. And, uh, man, it's just been, it's been awesome. And I'm excited about the future i'm excited about what god's doing in you and don and in your family and the things that i just look forward to watching the future unfold in you and don's life in yeah. regards to the kingdom of god and what he's called y'all to be and what he's called you to do amen amen i remember you telling me here when you get out you get plugged in somewhere yeah, i don't care where it is just get buddy. plugged in Amen. And you ain't going nowhere because I'll come get you. <laughs> Amen. I'll run Amen. you down, brother. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. It's Amen. good to have you, Richard. I love this. this Thank good. you very much for having me. Come on. Crank it up, Christian. Joy Church Podcast, episode 14, 15, somewhere in there, man. Come on. <laughs> awesome, awesome.